Hello and welcome to my Hornby Double O train room. This is the first of maybe a couple of videos that is going to go into detail about the workings of my layout. Okay, first of all, this uh, we're in an attic room, as you can see there, and I have uh, insulation and windows. The window is actually just for ventilation as I've blanked out the damaging sun rays. Um, now the uh, criteria of my layout is, and the rules that I've set myself is that all the, all the trains and track are original um, Hornby double O and that there is uh, allocated space for everything that uh, Hornby Double O made, and they're all in the correct uh, correct positions, according to the uh, four railway companies. Uh, another rule I've made is that I should try and run these trains as realistically as possible, and that means really the speeds should be reasonable, and the correct direction on the on the main lines and uh, little or no reversing uh, apart from shunting that V and um, and also every train on there has its own um, has its own uh, position it, I can switch on any train uh, so it's ready to run so they, they all have their isolated track sections um, and also that the uh, layout is set during the double O era. So, uh, you know, like the layouts we had back in the day. So uh, I don't do fine scale or, or detailed modelling. Okay, now here is the... Uh, here is the... Uh, 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 the plan of the uh, layout. You see the, uh, there we go. The, the, the layout is about 28 foot by uh, by 12 foot and um, and it has four lines. You can see in the, the key up there, line one, two, three, four and zero. So line, uh, the red and uh, red and green lines uh, is line one, lines one and two go right around the perimeter of the layout and they go through the two stations the LMS and the Great Western Station uh, lines three and four the uh, yellow and uh, black they go around the outside also through, through the Great Western Station but then they then they cut in and come in right past the uh, the operating position, which is where I am now, right at this point here, which makes for close uh, close inspection of the trains as they as they pass by. Makes it very interesting, rather than them being in the distance, sort of thing. And finally, line, what I call line zero, is everything else. It's the stations and the, uh, and the marshalling yard and the, and the uh, loco depots and everything. So in order to keep everything in its uh, correct position, we have the... Um, the LMS station here, the Southern Railway station with the uh, with the Southern Railway's goods yard, and then we have the LNER station. Next to that is the uh, the goods yard for the LNER, and the and the um, MPD motor power department there, and then we grab the Great Westerns station and the good yards for that and we go on to the marshalling yard and well, that's about uh, 
17 foot long and it has a as a as a a hump around the outside and in there we have the diesel depot and uh, the goods uh, MPD right there also a coaling stage and and the uh, reception sidings then you have the uh, LMS goods depot and the LMS repair depot this originally was going to be this was based on the um, top shed the the um, LNER facilities for repairing the trains in London but uh, because of its location next to next to the LMS uh, station I changed it to, to LMS okay now this is a a, a working diagram as, as would be seen in the in the uh, signal cabin so when I uh, when I flick a, a, a point a, a route open you can see here that uh, the route is lit up and they all all originate or end right here where my signal cabin is so there's uh, there's about uh, eight different routes hit here so whichever whichever set of points I open up it opens up a new route and it works with that little daisy running around there you see there it's just a motor operated uh, pickups on there on to operate the lights okay this um, we have on the track is about nine nine hundred feet of uh, track altogether so it's quite big and there are about a hundred a hundred and thirty points uh, 750 straights uh, about 100 and 180 curves so something something in that region the uh, 900 foot is a, is a, is about 13 miles in uh, in scale okay and there's a photo of my layout when I was back in the day as we say okay now the uh, the controllers I keep them down here uh, they're on a little little table a television t TV stand I keep some tools and supplies underneath so here's the controllers we have uh, uh, line one, line two. Uh, I'm not using this because I've got some problems, so I put the uh, I put the handheld units in. So I'm just using the handhelds at the moment. Then there's line three, line four, line zero, or the fifth line is this one at the back. But I use this uh, this handheld unit for that one. I also have a an amp meter connected up. So I can keep an eye on what the condition of the trains. The uh, small controllers at the back here are uh, they're just for adjusting the speed as the trains travel through the station areas. So I can uh, slow the trains down to make it more realistic running as they as they pass through the stations. Or if I want to stop there, they you're not stopping from a sort of a very fast speed. Um, another interesting thing is this little switch box here. This will switch power from from any of the four main running lines over to uh, line zero. That means I can switch the whole layout to work on the one controller, or I can switch individual lines so if I want to say drive from line one to line four 
I can switch both these switches over and I use the same controller to bring the train in to line zero and then out again to line four and it'll be a like a stepless uh, smooth run through. The other switch at the top here switches on my uh, feedback controller. So uh, I, I usually just use that for, let me show you that one. I usually just use the feedback controller for, for, uh, for shunting. I don't normally run trains with the, with the feedback. So one of the most difficult things in, on my rules is, is controlling the speed. And to achieve this, or help to achieve this, I have rewound my motors. A rewinding a motor with more turns on the pole pieces means you get a slower speed and a higher torque. So uh, here's a sort of a demonstration of one of my re rewound uh, motors. Now this isn't on the feedback controller, and they it's just more powerful, slower speed, and less likely to stall on corners. On, on the bends. Now, to show you how I rewind my motors, I've set up my little rewinding jig here. As you can see, there's a uh, there's a motor in there right now, and there's the copper wire, and I have a little. The handle is actually a. Uh, a rev counters because I put uh, I put about 300 turns sometimes between 275 and 300 turns on each one of the poles on the on the on the motor there. Uh, you can solder them on first. It, it's easier to get into to with the soldering iron. Solder it to the commutator and then uh, when you round all three, join the last three ends together and tuck it in. And after which I just use a bit of nail varnish to uh, seal it all together. But just a quick, uh, you can see this working if I just turn the handle like so. Oops, I, it's a two-hand operation. You can see the wire's gone a little bit uh, off, off, off track there. But uh, I usually steady, steady the wire, put a little bit of tension on with my fingers, and then just count off the turns. Okay, I think that covers it for this video. I shall make another one shortly about some of the automatic uh, automatic uh, uh, running of the trains. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.